In this final video on long stitch binding in a medieval style, I'll demonstrate two different ways to wrap the external long stitches on the spine of the book. I'll also show attaching a thread for the closure. I'm using a fairly heavy 18.5 linen thread, which I'm also waxing. I've tried to use a similar thickness thread to what was used in the historical example. I counted the number of wrapping threads in the photo of the example and used this as a rough estimate of the diameter. The thread I'm using is about 0.8 millimeters thick. I'll use the standard number 18 straight bookbinding sewing needle. It's a bit difficult to thread the needle and I don't bother with the piercing the thread trick to keep the needle on, as the thread is a very tight fit in the eye. I start by going out from inside the book between two sections, so the thread comes out the outermost hole. I tie a figure eight knot on the end of the thread, and this will stop the thread pulling through. It's hard to tell from the photos how the pattern is started, but I have experimented with starting with the straight figure eight, and it doesn't look like the photos. For the very first wrap, I take the needle back on the side opposite to the direction of wrapping. After doing this once, it's a simple figure eight wrapping with the needle and thread passing back and forth on the side that is the direction of the wrapping. You can do many variations of this basic figure eight. Instead of doing two lots of three, you could go all the way across all the six threads, and instead of going above and below each long stitch, you could do them in pairs. Once I find other interesting historical examples, I will demonstrate other wrapping options in future videos. I think the historical example this binding is based on was done in this simple figure eight way. However, I have found examples that look different. The second method I'll demonstrate is my guess as how these other patterns were done. So why are the external long stitches on these books wrapped? They're not all wrapped. There are examples where the primary sewing is left without wrapping. The consensus of the people who study these bindings is that, that the main reason was to protect the sewing, but it also serves a decorative element. The spines of many books with stiff spine plates are often decorated with patterned piercing of the plate, pieces of shiny metal inlaid, usually lead, and the occasional blind tooling. It is also suggested that the wrapping can be used to tighten up loose sewing. However, I'm not a huge fan of this theory. It's very easy to over tighten the sewing on these books and the thread inside the sections could easily cut through the fold. This is why parchment stays are often used inside these books. A parchment stay is a narrow strip of parchment folded into a V-shape and put inside the section to stop the thread pulling through. They can be the length of the book from head to tail or just short sections where the paired sewing holes are. The historical exemplar for this binding has parchment stays that are the length of the sections. This wrapping is very much like end banding. It's all about maintaining regular tension and keeping things compressed. It is possible to wrap the threads in such a way that the long stitches are pulled in more in the center of the stitch 
lengthways forming an hourglass shape. I'm yet to master this and I think it depends on the spacing of the long stitches as much as the tension. In several examples, including the exemplar, I've seen the thread swaps from one wrapping to another. Most times this seems to happen only at one end, but I've seen examples where the thread is taken back to complete the loop. After swapping over to the other long stitches, it's a matter of following the same process up rather than down. To finish, I'll go back inside the book and tie another figure of eight and try and push the knot up to the inside of the cover. It's probably better to tie off to a thread inside the cover, but this is easier done with a curved needle and I was being a bit lazy. I can't tell from the photos how the exemplar wrapping thread was finished.
In a photo of another example, I noticed the pattern of the wrapping resulted in a slightly asymmetrical shape. I experimented with different ways of wrapping the thread and came up with a method where the return thread is inserted between the last thread and the body of the wrapping. It's difficult to explain, but I hope the video is clear. The resulting wrapping looks very close to the example I saw. Unfortunately, the example I saw was a very poor quality photo and I don't feel comfortable using it without permission. This method is easier done with a curved needle and while a bit slower, I think it's easier to control the tension throughout the wrapping as the thread gets locked. I think using this method it may be easier to get the hourglass shape. I demonstrated in this video because I'm fairly confident this method has been used historically, though I've not had anyone confirm this or found any documentation of it. While I'll stick with traditional wrapping patterns based on historical examples for the videos, modern binders have become very creative in developing beautiful wrapping patterns. I'm sure these have been influenced by the weaving arts. There is a lot of scope for creativity in wrapping long stitch bindings.
Since I've got a curved needle on, I'll finish this wrapping more securely by tying off to sewing inside the spine. I'll catch up the thread spanning between sections and tie off with a simple overhand knot. Here's a close-up of the two results compared to the historical example. To finish today, I'll add a thread to the four edge flap for closure. This is simply a row of link stitches. I made the holes 5mm apart, which I think makes an attractive row of stitches. I was worried about the thread pulling through the fake parchment, and thus I added a small strip of real parchment inside the flap. In historical examples, instead of trimming the corners of the flap, the corners would be folded underneath and the row of link stitches would be sewn through the two layers of parchment. This works best if there are two buttons or studs near the ends of the book.
That completes this modern but medieval influenced binding. It's a very enjoyable binding and I think very practical as an interesting notebook. It can be completed relatively quickly with basic materials and no adhesive. There is a lot to recommend it and I hope many of you give it a go. I want everyone to get hooked on these so I can do many more variations. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the like button. You can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and select the notification bell. Until next time, cheerio!